game of life is a very simple example of reaching for order when there's an excess of energy or reaching for order and somehow creating complexity it, within like this, this explosion of just turmoil, somehow trying to construct structures. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, uh, create very elaborate organism looking type things. Mm -hmm. What intuition do you draw from this simple mechanism? Well, I, I like to turn that around its head and um, and look at it as what if every single one of the patterns created life or created, you know, not life, but created interesting patterns. Because, you know, some of them don't. And sometimes you make cool gliders. And other times, you know, you start with certain things and you make gliders and other things that then construct like, you know, AND gates and NOT gates, right? And you build computers on them. Um, all of these rules that create these patterns that we can see, those are just the patterns we can see. What if our subjectivity is actually limiting our ability to perceive the order in all of it? Mm -hmm. You know, what if some of the things that we think are random are actually not that random? We're simply not integrating at a fine enough level across a broad enough time horizon. Um, and this is, again, why I said we go down the rabbit hole of some of the Penrose stuff or like Wolfram's explorations on these things. Um, there is something deep and beautiful in the mathematics of all this. That is, hopefully one day I'll have enough money to where I can retire and just ponder those, <laughs> those questions. But there's something there. But you're saying there's a ceiling to when you have enough money and you retire and you ponder mm -hmm. it, there's a ceiling to how much you can truly ponder because there's cognitive limitations in what you're able to perceive as a pattern yeah so and uh, maybe mathematics extends your perception capabilities but it's still it's still finite it's, it's just like yeah the, the mathematics we use is the mathematics that can fit in our head yeah you know did god really create the integers <laughs> or did god create all of it and we just happen at this point in time to be able to perceive integers well he just did the, the positive in she uh, actually the, did she create she, all she. <laughs> and then we um, she, she she just created the natural numbers and then we screwed it all up with zero and then I guess, okay. But uh, we did, we created mathematical uh, operations so that we can have iterated steps mm -hmm. to approach bigger problems, yeah. right? I mean, the entire the entire point of the Arabic numeral system and it's a rubric for mapping a certain set of operations and folding them into a simple little expression. But that's just the operations that we can fit in our heads. And there are many other operations besides, right? The thing that worries me the most about aliens and humans is that the aliens are all around us and we're too dumb yeah. to see them. Oh, certainly, yeah. Or life, let's say just life. Life of all kinds of forms or organisms. You know what, just even the intelligence of organisms mm -hmm. is uh, imperceptible to us because we're too dumb and self-centered. That worries Well, we're me. looking for a particular kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, when I was at Cornell, I had a lovely professor of Asian religions, Jane Marie Law, and she would tell this um, story about a musical, a musician, a Western musician who went to Japan and he taught, you know, classical music and could play all, you know, all sorts of instruments. He went to Japan um, and he would ask people, you know, he would basically be looking for things in the style of Western, you know, uh, chromatic scale and these kinds of things. And then finding none of it, he would say, well, there's really no music in Japan, but they're using a different scale. They're yeah. playing different kinds of instruments, right? The same thing she was using as a, sort of a, a metaphor for religion as well. And the West, we center a lot of religion, certainly the, the religions of Abraham, we center them around belief. And in the East, it's more about practice, right? Spirituality and practice rather than belief. So anyway, the point is here, to your point, um, life, we... I think so many people are so fixated on certain aspects of self-replication or, you know, homeostasis or whatever. But if we kind of broaden and generalize this thing of things reaching for order, under which conditions can they then create an environment that sustains that order and that um, allows them, you know, the, the invention of death is an interesting thing. There are some organisms on earth that are thousands of years old, mm -hmm. and it's not like they're incredibly complex, they're actually simpler than the cells that comprise us, but they never die. So at some point, um, death was invented, you know, uh, somewhere along the eukaryotic scale. I mean, even the protists, right? There's death. And why is that? Along with the um, sexual reproduction, right? There is something about the renewal process, something about the ability to respond to a changing environment where it just become, you know, just killing off the old generation and letting new generations 
try seems to be the best way to fit into the niche. You know, human historian seems to write about wheels and, and fire as the greatest inventions, but it seems like death and sex are pretty good. And they're, <laughs> they're kind of essential inventions at the very beginning. At the very beginning, yeah. Well, we didn't invent them, right? They, well, broad, we, maybe you didn't invent <laughs> life, them. I life. see us as one, uh, you particular homo sapien did not invent them, but uh, we together, it's, it's a team project, just like you're saying. I think the greatest homo sapien invention is collaboration. 